Welcome to the only thing that matters, getting your startup to product market fit here on Chicago Founders TV. Mark Andreessen famously talks about product market fit as the only thing that matters, because without it, your startup is dead. Today, we're going to talk about a special type of startup, marketplaces, networks, and platforms. They're special in two ways. One, achieving product market fit is very difficult to do because you have the proverbial chicken egg problem. Without buyers, how do you get sellers to show up? Without sellers, how do you get buyers to show up? Solving that paradox is a challenging riddle, but a critical one. And the second reason it's so important is because once you do, you have an incredibly defensible and powerful business. Today's episode features George Boussis, the founder of Raise. Raise has quickly become one of the hottest marketplace startups in the country, attracting funding from the likes of NEA and Bessemer. In his founder story interview, George reveals the clever hacks that allowed him to nail product market fit by figuring out the chicken egg problem. Check it out. You know there's a gift card need. Where are people, are people selling gift cards before this? Where are they selling them before this? So there, there's a couple others uh, in the market that had existed before that bought gift cards from people for say 50 cents and a dollar. You ship them <coughs> a physical card, they verified a balance, send you a <coughs> check back. Um, and the process took about a month and a half, two months. And I knew that that model was fundamentally <laughs> broken. You know, you couldn't, I didn't want to raise money. I had seen from the grocery business of what inventory can do. You know, 70% of your food goes wasted every three days. So did people, there were these places you could sell them. Would they, would they find people on Craigslist or where would they? I'm not exactly even sure how they had, you know, uh, grown their customer base at the time. But um, <clears throat> what we did early on to actually kind of get some traction was, like many startups, hacked Craigslist. You know, Craigslist became the, the pinata. And so, um, you know, we had figured out that Craigslist was so let's, on... Let's, let's unpack this for a minute, because there's two, we talk a lot at yeah. Founder Stories here about two-sided networks, two-sided marketplaces, and the, the big challenge is always liquidity. Yep. How do you get to liquidity? If you get to liquidity, great things happen, but most people die way before they get to liquidity. So <clears throat> you need supply in the marketplace. So you're, you're essentially buying gift cards yep. off the rack, what kind of discount are you selling them on? That? We didn't know at the time, so we were selling Walmart <laughs> cards at like 20% off. And they're like, holy cow, people are buying this stuff. And so they're, they're, you know, they're buying dollar bills for 80 cents. Yep, to uh, Walmart. To that Walmart. sell at 2% off today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're seeding the marketplace. Um, so that's how you get the supply. Yep. And what kind of money were you spending on supply at the time? I mean, I don't even know exactly how much it was. I know there were grocery bags of gift cards coming into the office. Wow. Kind of, I was sending Angelo. I was like, clear the rack. Go buy everything. And so, you know, and it because you can't just buy the same card because then you learn nothing about the market. So you're trying to buy every different brand. You're trying to figure out what are people willing to buy it for? How do you price it? How do you transfer <laughs> it? How do people receive it? How do you digitalize it? Mm -hmm. How do you sell it? What kind of collateral do you need? So so this is great. I just want to keep unpacking it. So you, you, you've got your buying cards. you got... Grocery bags full of cards. How do you get the buyers? Um, so buyers, again, uh, first started off Craigslist, reaching out to people, buy discount cards, come to raise. Um, and then we had figured out that Craigslist actually was catching on to people that were, um, you know, uh, creating <clears throat> scripts. So we did it in a smarter way. We actually created like a lead gen tool out of it and then manually emailed people and then proxied the IPs so that when you actually email people, it looked like the emails were coming from all over the country and they were being sent in random times, and they were all unique content. <clears throat> so we're reaching out to people, telling them to come buy <coughs> So you hacked Craigslist. Money. Yep, as uh, <laughs> terrible as that sounds. <laughs> so um, you're buying gift cards, you're hacking Craigslist, and you're trying to get liquidity to work, yep. and it's costing you... I mean, <clears throat> a couple bucks a transaction, if you can imagine. But the wow. good news is that we didn't have a lot of transactions back then. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, it's an iterative process. And so, you know, it's, it's you, you list, you learn, you price, sell it. We called every customer. I think we called the first 25,000 people. And wow. we still call people. I mean, Say that again, the first 25,000. 25,000. I think I spoke to 5,000 people <clears throat> myself. And you're calling them, how was the experience? What can I learn? What did we do better? Did you receive the card? Um, how were the discounts? You know, <clears throat> you sold a card. Why did you sell it for so cheap? What happened? Just to understand who our customers were. You, know, you can't, in any business, you can't prioritize making money first before you understand your product. And so for us, we needed How'd to understand. How do you know to do that? I think, again, a lot of it was, was the past. It was understanding what our customers wanted in the grocery business and how we can better serve them with the products that they were looking for, not how much money we can make on our customers. 
you know, tapping into seasonality and foods, knowing that people were more likely to buy these items at these times of year. So we were able to, you know, grow <coughs> that margin at that point because they were high in demand products. So what are some of the things you learned early on from these calls and watching people do things that were counterintuitive that you never would have expected had you not gone through the rigor of it? The huge thing was <coughs> the discounts people were willing to pay for. I thought there's no way people are going to pay one or 2% off for a card. And, all those things kind of completely blew us away when we were selling these cards. The other thing was digital adoption, actually how much people and, and, and what a big missing piece of the equation digital was at the time. So instead of shipping out a card and have this month and a half long process, being able to list a card and sell it. I mean, now today, if you look on average, you know, a top 25 retailer sells in minutes or seconds when listed at, at, at market. And so... Back then, it's, you know, although the, the periods were longer, we watched every single, you know, data point, every bit of a analytics. We really understood our customers as if we were customers of our own product. And so it really allows you to get into the mindset of, of, of the audience, of your, of your base, what people love, what they don't, um, what they look forward to, what we can improve, and uh, just kind of continue to, you know, iterate and evolve over time. So you're doing this, <clears throat> what I would call kind of brute force marketplace, yep. where you're, you're seeding the cards, you're buying some of them, selling some of them, you're getting people, you're hacking Craigslist, and you're learning. So how long does that go, and what, what made, it keep, made you keep doing that, and what made you know you were ready to make the, the shift? Yeah, so that process probably took us 15 months. 15 16 months. months and you know it may seem like a long time for a for a company today but I think in anything good and anything that's thought after you know you have to use time as as leverage and and use that time to understand your your customers you know the the startup that just presented you saw how long it took to build their product and that's because great things take time and so you never want to just throw something out there um, and, and release something that you yourself wouldn't use or find value in. And you're never going to get anything perfect on day one. But if you can continue to test and continue to build, um, and like we said, iterate over and over and over again, you really begin to understand you know, what people want and what they're doing. Got it. Well, so the, <clears throat> what happened in terms of um, some of those other early lessons learned? Like, you know, what... Um, you know, well, you realize as you as you, as you were like, what made you figure out now's the time to shift into being a, a different kind of market to being what is Raise.com today? Sure, I, I think it's when we first really understood the power of the business model and the liquidity in a balanced marketplace. It was realizing that you couldn't have too much supply because then it wasn't sought after. You couldn't have too much demand because then there wasn't enough supply for them to purchase. And so it's this constant chicken and egg thing that you're fighting. I think one of the first times we talked, you said something interesting to me about. Um, one of the lessons was that the gift card business wasn't about gift cards. Yeah, I mean, for us, it, talk, it, talk about that takeaway because that's obviously not intuitive since they are called. Sure. Gift cards. So, I mean, um, when you don't have much money, you can't be too creative with a name, and so you think of something that's really boring. Um, and so it was coupon trade at the time, and what we wanted to really do was. Uh, understand how people were using the platform. Were they using coupons and gift cards? Were they buying daily deals? So we kind of added everything into the mix. So you could buy gift cards, coupons, daily deals, <laughs> and you learn really quickly that you were actually just confusing people on am I buying and selling coupons? Am I using gift cards? How does that strategy translate into acquiring new customers? Because none of our affiliates would work with us because we had you know cookies in browser, for instance. SEO became impossible, especially when you don't have money. That's your only uh, way to get traffic. Um, and so, you know, you can't target coupon, gift card, deal in the same sentence and hope to rank on Google. If you do, we should talk. Um, but, uh, you know, you learn that, you know, we looked at the coupon industry and saw that there were other big players, Retail Me Nots, Coupons.com, all these others in the market. And really the largest opportunity for us was the gift cards. It was an untapped market, huge potential. Um, and essentially you're selling money for less. And so one they're of gift our, cards, but they're not using them like a traditional gift card. They're not. So 
actually almost every transaction on the site are people that are using gift cards for themselves. Hmm. And so they're not necessarily gifting it to others. And the reason for that is it, it goes back to the whole uh, reason of why we created Raise uh, as a brand. And so we thought of discounts and coupon as something that's cheap. It, it almost is a, a bit degrading or you know doesn't feel as good. And so when we looked at gift cards, we wanted to create an environment where people looked at savings as a conceptually entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get a raise, you feel like you have more. You get an upgrade. It feels good. I feel positive because I'm buying dollar bills for 85 cents. And so, you know, every time I use the site, I feel like I have more for my money. Mm -hmm. And same thing on the sell side. I took this piece of plastic and I turned it into cash that I can use anywhere. And so that was our whole spin on, on the entire industry. And it was also something that we not only wanted to live by for our customers, but something that we wanted to, you know, really promote and believe in within as an organization. And so um, it's something that we use all the time at Raise, and we talk about raising the bar or raising our standards. You know, okay. So in the beginning, a lot of it was affiliate. You know, it was a cheap, really inexpensive way to get to scale. So it actually attributed for about 50% of the business at the time because you're a brand new brand. Not a lot of people trust you. So the first key in marketplaces is trust and safety. So, you know, by working with the affiliates and by giving people good deals and having a great experience, you had to gain the trust of the customer. And from there, you know, most people were more kind of inclined to buy and save money than sell. It's a bit of a tougher process to convince people to sell cards. But then you learn about cross-selling. You learn about you know, one-on-one -on -one marketing. Do you have power sellers in this business? Do you find any, are there bulk sellers of any kind? Yeah, so in, in any successful marketplace that you see today, um, I had forgot who wrote something on this, but they um, had done a whole study on large marketplace businesses. The most successful ones are driven by bulk sellers in the very beginning. Uh, imagine StubHub with ticket brokers, Uber with the black cars. Um, you know, you see it everywhere. Etsy, eBay with power sellers. And so we had found... Um, out basically where all of our competitors were getting their inventory from at the time. And so there were these guys that had kiosks in shopping malls, for instance, that were buying gift cards <coughs> for 50 to 75 cents in a dollar, sometimes even more, and turning and flipping them on the marketplace. So we found out about these guys and we kind of built a sales team, uh, you know, five guys working on one phone because we didn't know what a sales team was at the time. And just had them flying out to meet these people, shake their hands, introduce them to How raise. important was that to getting liquidity and scale? That was huge because anytime you tap into an audience where there's an entrepreneur there that's using this to make money and leverage the market um, to feed their family or grow their business. So you've got, you're seeding the market, then you get going, you start paying for affiliates to send you Traffic consumers. Traffic and buyers. And then... Bulk sellers. We're pushing bulk sellers so on that this becomes end. the sort of what got raised. Yeah, that becomes the, the essence of liquidity in the beginning, and that's the balance that we talk about. And then from there, as other people see that there's inventory being listed, sellers have their cards selling, buyers are getting discounts to the brands that they love, that's when the liquidity really begins to accelerate. 